Let's have this service, Lord. Yeah. Let's have yeah. 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 so your word. Yeah. Yeah. Do so your word. Yeah. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
and the fact that he has left us here is reason enough to tell him thank you. I don't know who you are, don't know what you're concerned about, but if you will take it to the altar and leave it there, God is able, God is willing to take care of you. With, with, if you don't mind, would you stand? I want to ask a special prayer for a sister, and that corporate sister, Emma Andrews, Deacon Isaac, Skiller's sister, and Deacon Powers, Brother Marvin Skiller's sister, Martha Mitchell, Sister Mary Black, Sister Mary Douglas, Sister Anthony Jones, Sister Mildred Jay, Sister Betty Greiner, Brother Charles Moss, Sister Erica Colvin, the entire Beck and White family and the passing of yet another member of the family, the wife of the late Leon Hatton, Miss Gloria Hatton. Arrangements have been, uh, are incomplete at this time. We know that the services will be August the 4th, but we need a time and a location and we will get back to you with that. We also are asking that you would pray for um, um, the Christian Bowers family, that is, I will own, as you all know, you can see Sister Anna is not here, she lost a cousin by the name of Daryl Bowers, and we will be funeralizing him this evening, we ask that you would pray for that family, we ask that you would pray for Sister Cassandra Elba Hart, that you would pray for Brother Dustin Kia, uh, Randy Leaf, the Higginbottom family, we also ask that you would pray for our own sister, Sarah Moss, that you would pray for Brother Corey Corbin, that you would pray for Brother Lindell Dunnigan, that you would pray for the mother of our own Brother Bryson, that you would pray for uh, Brother Griffin, who will have a procedure on this week coming. We know that God is a prayer hearing and the act of God. Amen. And they turn around, but we don't know when it's going to be our turn. But it's good to know somebody's friend. For as we sing a few verses.
for you are worthy to be worthy. From the rising of the sun until the setting of the sun, you are worthy to be worthy. And now I want to tell you thank you before I go in the fall. Thank you for the answer of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for stepping in the hospital room in the world and being with little brother Kaboom. Not only with him, oh Lord, thank you for traveling grace and mercy and his family traveling to be there. Brought him back home and saved him, Lord. I want to tell you thank you for answering our guys in this prayer. Not only that, Lord, but I want to tell you, thank you, God, because you've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to our story. And Lord, you haven't just started answering our prayers. You've always answered our prayers. And for that, we tell you, thank you, Lord. Sometimes you didn't answer them in the way we thought you should have, but you answered them in the way that we need. And for that, Lord, we tell you, thank you, Lord. But Lord, I have come to realize that without problems in my life, I would not pray. And so, Lord, we tell you thank you for the gift of prayer. The yes, yes. Lord, that we can bring in all of our cares and concerns to you and leave them at the altar, Lord. Lord, you have heard of the names that have been lifted in our hearing, oh Lord. Lord, you know what each one of your children need collectively and individually, oh Lord. Lord, we ask that you would meet them at their point of need, oh Lord. Whether it is sickness and disease, Lord, we know that you are a doctor that has never lost a patient, oh Lord. Whether it is heartache and burdens, Lord, we know that you are a burden bearer and a heart fixer, oh Lord. Lord, maybe it is a troubled way, oh Lord, but we know that you are a bridge over troubled water. Let it be all that you would have it to be and none of what we want it to be. And Lord, we are mindful that somebody needs you. Yes. Somebody needs a word from on high to live. Right, right. So Lord, we ask that you would not let us be here for shape, form, or fashion, but to praise your holy and righteous right, right. name. That you may get the glory of Lord. Yes. This is our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to coordinate and invite each and every one of you all to Sunday school each Sunday morning at 9 35 and Bible study each Wednesday night starting at 6 p.m. I want to take this opportunity to personally invite you to please be my guest. Amen. 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 Uh, the funeral services for Miss Carolyn Jackson. This is the cousin niece of our own brother running back, also known as Brother Running Handwright, amen, amen, will be this Friday, July the 28th, at 11 a.m. at John P. Franklin Funeral Home, amen? amen? Amen. Let us pray for the Beck Handwright Jackson family, amen, as they uh, have suffered a many losses in the last few weeks, amen? Amen. 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 Um, 
Women's Day is fast approaching. Amen. 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 Let us get our ducks in a row so we won't be caught with our work on God. Amen. 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 Uh, at this time, I would designate us who will come to recognize our visitors.
you know me. This morning, my brothers and sisters, as we have gathered here on another Lord's Day, those are words that we would share to someone, most times a friend, a loved one. When we say those words, you know me, they are packed either for good or bad. Sometimes I use those statements around the house, even with my wife, and don't y'all tell her, I know she's watching, but uh, sometimes when, when she when, 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 when she's done something for me and, and it, it's not like I would have wanted her to do it and she can see that look in my face and she says, what's wrong with you? I look back at her and say, you know. <laughs> um, we tell that to our friends, especially when we have missed out on something that we really wanted to be a part of. We'll tell our friends, they'll say, we went and done this. For example, I'm going to use the Beyonce concert the other week that was in Nashville. Somebody said, I'm going to tell the Beyonce concert I got the tickets for a good price. Why you didn't get me one? You know me. I would have went. <laughs> and that's exactly the reason why I didn't get you one, because I know that you are one who probably wouldn't have given me my money back. <laughs> And so when you say you know me, it implies that somebody knows you a little better than being a friend. Friends know a little something about you. Acquaintances know a little less about you. But people that you let into your inner circle, you assume they know you. They, they, they know what rubs you the wrong way. They, 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 they know what you like to do and what you don't care to do. Am I talking right in here this morning? When, when, when folk know you, you have the propensity to tell them you got your nerves because you know me. I thought I was going to have some witness in here this, this morning. I, I thought I was going to have some, some people in here that understood that, that when you say you know me, it implies something more than a surface knowledge. It, it implies an intimate knowledge that, that somebody knows the, the intrinsic parts about you. They can almost predict some of the things that you will say and do. After almost 21 years of dealing with my wife in marriage and in dating, there are some things that she can say for me when I'm thanking her without me saying it. And I used to wonder how folk could be married for a little while and I they were married one of the spouses or mates could finish the sentence or saying of the other one, but it's because they had spent some time together and spending time together uh, breeds familiarity and familiarity makes you come to the point that you know somebody. Now, now, now you can say you know somebody and somebody can come declare you, now you don't know me. And we're able to say those things only when somebody has pushed our backs up against the wall and beginning to try to push our buttons and we are able to do what the Lord said do. He provides a, a way of escape and we're able to sidestep the shenanigans by not losing our sanctified mind and giving somebody a piece of our worldly mind, we're able to remove ourselves from the situation and say, now, nah, you don't know me like that. That's what we find ourselves in the text. It's strange that David, a man after God's own heart, would take out time to pen this 139th Psalm. David pins this Psalm and 
We know about David. David is called the man after God's own heart. Not because David was super spiritual. Not because he was so heavenly minded that he was no earthly good. Not because he didn't make mistakes and sin. But David was called the man after God's own heart because David knew how to go back to the Lord in prayer and ask God to fix him up. Y'all don't believe me, do you? David could only say, you know me because David was the same one that said, God create within me a clean heart and renew the right spirit. That's David going back to the Lord after he messed up saying, God, it's me. And you can only declare that the Lord knows you after having spent time walking with the Lord. We do know that David walked with the Lord. David, although he was not super spiritual, David was a man after God's own heart. And David reminds us even of ourselves in this 21st century that we live in. In other words, we won't do everything right. We will make mistakes, but when we make mistakes, if we would go back to the Lord and fall down on bending knees, and even if we don't know the words, repeat David's word, Lord, create within me a clean heart and renew the right spirit because the reality of the matter is is that we are living in a world when there are competing spirits all around us. We live in a time now not only is the church at 11 o'clock the most segregated hour in America, but now every other day in America is the most segregated hour in America because those who are in power would have us think that we are different and that we don't like one another. All right. yes, they put that mess in our head. And we buy into it, not like other folk, not because we don't know who they are, simply because they're different from us and we hate what is different. Wonder what we learned there from. And so David takes our time to write this 139th Psalm. I was wrestling all week with this. I wanted to know what was going on in David's life. Brother David, why didn't you be in this 139th Psalm? I couldn't find the problem. I, I couldn't find the outside enemy. I, I couldn't find the force. Most times when you read about David, you can find the specific problem. The thing that was ailing him, that, that itch for his scratch, that problem that was causing him conflict in his life. Most times you can find it, but David is contemplating his life. Don't know how old David is. Don't know what makes David sit down to pee in this psalm. This psalm is a, is a mixture of thanksgiving, lament, and wisdom. In, in other words, David is thankful. He cries out to God. And then he, 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 ha he shares wisdom for his hearers. He says, you know me. That's a pretty bold yes, statement. Because yes, to know somebody implies that you've opened yourself up to vulnerability. You have to be vulnerable in front of God. Oh, I know you didn't want to hear that vulnerability. Right. Right. You have to be vulnerable to God. And David had found himself somewhere in life when he was 
contemplating the mysteries of the universe, maybe even looking back over his life. I don't know if he was old. I don't know if he was young. I don't know if he was having a midlife crisis. I don't know if it was because an enemy was bothering him. He does mention an enemy in this text. I don't know what occasion David to write it, but David said that you have searched me and you know me. And if we are going to understand that you, you being God, God knows me. And I don't know about you this morning, but, but I know you want God to know you. And David says that, Lord, you, you know me because you have searched me. And, 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 and what these first six verses speak to is the omnipotence of God. And if you're going to know that God knows you, you got to know that God knows everything. Somewhere in Psalms I read that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell in it. God knows everybody. You don't believe it, do you? You, you, you don't believe it. They, they, they said, they said, you search me and you know me. And what he is saying is, not David is not saying search like you take a flashlight, like you move stuff around. So David is saying like you interrogated me in a courtroom. David says, you, you have investigated me. You know me. God, you know all about me. You know me completely. And once you know that God knows you because he knows everything, it ought to govern your life. Oh, I'm going to get out of here in a minute. I ain't got but a few minutes. David says, you know me, God. You know my sin down. And my standing up. Yeah. What David is saying is God knows so much about me that even in my personal life, God knows. Uh -huh. And that's good to know that even when I think I'm at home being slick and uh, sliding and hiding to myself, they can't nobody see me. I got to know that God already knows. All right. Oh, somebody gonna get that over way home. When, 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 when David says, even in the secret corridors of my home, he knows me. And I just stopped to ask somebody if walls can talk this morning. What, what would those walls say about us in our secret places? But the thing is, God already knows. Not only does he say when I sit down, he says when I stand up, that speaks to his public life. And you know we try to masquerade around between our public life and our private life. In our public life, we know all the church jargon. Too blessed to be stressed. I'm blessed and high of faith. But in our secret life, if you rub me the wrong way, I ain't gonna tell you I'm too stressed to be blessed. I ain't gonna tell you I'm blessed and high of faith. But what I'm going to tell you in my secret life is where to go get off it and how to get out and stay out. But the good news is, is that God, he knows me. Does that give us a license? To sin, because God already knows us. Paul says, God forbid. David 
understand that the reason why I can declare he knows me is because I've opened myself up to him. And so many times the reason why we can't hear from God, we can't experience God, we can't feel God is because we won't open up to God. I'm almost done. Y'all keep looking at me with the do not disturb signs. He, he says, he says, God, you know all about me because you know everything. You know how I'm going to act when I'm at home with the coach pool. You know how I'm going to act when I'm in the public. The matter of fact, there is not a thought of mine that you don't think, that you don't know. He says, my thoughts, you know, are far off. Oh, somebody ought to be scary as hell. Because I can't speak for nobody else, but I ain't always thinking about Jesus. Sometimes somebody done rubbed me the wrong way, and I'm thinking about how to get in. made me mad and I'm thinking about how I'm going to get them told without cussing them out. Sometimes my back is up against the wall and I just want to come out swinging and before I can do that because he knows me and he knows all about me he keeps me. Aren't you glad he's a keep me?
before I was away and all where you knew all about me. So I stop by to tell you that God knows us. He knows me because God knows everything, but not only does he know us because he knows everything, God knows us because God is omnipresent. <laughs> In other words, God is everywhere. David says that uh, if I uh, take the walk, if I go up to heaven, you are there. But the question is, is where can I go to escape you? Or where can I flee from your presence? The Lord was letting David know what David was reflecting that everywhere I've been, God has already been there. <laughs> In other words, David is saying that there's nowhere, no place on earth that I can run. I can run, but I can't. <laughs> if you don't mind for a few moments, let me bring it a little closer. Jonah tried to run one time and ended up in the, in the belly of a fish. <laughs> and, uh, David tried to run one time and ended up in the camp of the Philistines. Ahab ran one time and ended in a cave. But every time they ran, God was already there. <laughs> I'm to tell somebody that because God knows us, you can't run, you can't hide, because God is already there. David said that if I uh, make my uh, go up to heaven, you're already there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning, you are there. If I go to the western limit, you are there. You are even there. Your hand will lead me. David understood that in the, when I'm doing right, uh, you are there even. When I'm doing wrong, Lord, you are there always. <laughs> David understood that not only was God all-knowing, but God was ever present. <laughs> and that's good news to know that no matter what we're going through, whether we're right or wrong, the Lord is there. <laughs> There's no way that we can run from the ever-searching and ever-seeing eye of God, and that is the good news. <laughs> to know that even in the middle of my mess and my lad is that God is right there. God may not help me through all of my problems, but to know that God is ever present in the very present help in the time of the Y'all come up for just a few more minutes, David. Uh, Brother Paul said, I sought the Lord three times to remove this thorn from my flesh, but the Lord wouldn't remove it. In other words, Paul says, I wanted him to take something from me, but it, he told me in my weakness, am I strong? <laughs> And I stop by to tell somebody this morning that no matter what you're going through, whether you're up or down, the Lord is there. <laughs> and if I'm in my bed, up in hell, you are there. If I live at the eastern horizon, your Bible says if I take the wings of the morning. <laughs> what David is saying, if I went as far east as I could go, you would meet me there. <laughs> if I went as far west or to the other side, of the sea, you are there. David understood that the Lord knew me. In other words, David is saying that the Lord knew me better than I knew myself. The Lord knew me because he made me, he cares, and he completed me. The Lord is ever present because I came around from his presence. I, I tried to run, but everywhere I ran, no matter where I turned, the Lord was right there. And David comes to the realization that not only is the Lord all present, but David says that the Lord is omnipotent. In other words, David says that the Lord has all power. And it's found in the text where David says, God, if only you would kill the wicked, you bloodthirsty and men, stay away from me, who invoke you deceitfully, your enemy swear by you falsely. In other words, David is saying that you have the power. Not only do you have the power to know everything, not only do you have the power to have presence wherever I am, but you have the power to destroy your enemies. And what David is saying is that your enemies are my enemies. And I like how David closes. David says in verse 23, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me. In other words, David says that, Lord, you know me. And I know you know me because you have the power. You have the power to keep on searching me. Search 
me over and over again. I beg that it's saying, not only will you search me, Lord, I will test me and try me. I will open anything in me I, that is not worthy of you. I, and I don't know y'all, who I'm talking to. I will in the now and then. I will stray from the Lord. I
each and every one of you all this Wednesday to Bible study. We get in at 6 p.m. I promise you, if you get on there, you will get on the back of out of here. Amen. We're having a good time. We are studying the minor prophets. Amen. It has been a fruitful and rich study because it reminds us from whence they were going through. We are still seeing some same similarities and some of the same complex problems that they experienced even in antiquity. And so we are thankful for this study. It has been rich and it has been fruitful. And we want to invite you to be a part of it. Again, don't forget to pray for all of our sick and shut in. Let us be mindful. Um, I did announce this. Sister Powers has been moved to Life Cares of Hickson, room 212. Amen. 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 Sister Powers has been moved. She is no longer in the hospital. She is in Life Cares of Hickson, uh, room 212. Amen. 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 Yes, Evangelist Bates went home on last Friday. Amen. Amen. I spoke to her. She had wanted to make sure. She called me last Sunday uh, to make sure that, Pastor, don't you be riding down that hospital. I'm home now. They sent me home. So we are thankful that she is at home and let us continue to pray for her. Amen. Listen, I'm soliciting your prayers. As soon as we give the benediction, I have to go to Nashville for a night funeral. Amen. Y'all know we do funerals at night in Nashville. Um, so I will be traveling there, and we will be coming back tonight. Sister Hannah is already there. Amen. Y'all pray for me when we're coming back, because we're bringing our nephew back with us. Uh, amen. Uh, listen, if our hearts and minds are clear, uh, let us stand and be dismissed. It is so good to have... Uh, Sister Charlotte's children and loved ones that were here with her today. Amen. 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 Um, let us listen. I need y'all to do me a favor too. Don't please don't get mad at me. On Thursday, Brother Griffin will be having a procedure. I need all my prayer warriors praying. Amen. Amen. Hey, it, it don't matter what he's going through. Just let's just pray for him. Amen. You don't have to know that somebody going to pray for him. Amen. And if he wants to divulge that information with you, then he can do that. But I'm just asking that Thursday morning when you wake up, you send up prayer for our brother. Amen. Because we know that the prayers of the righteous avail as much. Amen. Amen. And I know that prayer works. I know 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 it works. I know prayer works. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. God, our Father, here we are again. Let thy first do of mercy one more time. One more time, Lord. Lord, we tell you thank you for what our eyes have seen. Our ears have heard. And our hearts have felt the Lord. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that you know us. And because you know us, you expect better of us, O Lord. So, Lord, what are our steps in your word? Teach us how to walk in your word. Teach us how to talk in your word. Teach us how to love in your word. And, Lord, when we don't have the words, Teach us how to sing your praises. For you are worthy of all my life. Lord, we just tell you thank you for being our God. We being your children, oh Lord. And sometimes, even most of the time, we mess up. We make mistakes. We are so thankful that we serve a loving and forgiving God who is compassionate, slow to wrath, but quick to reconcile his children. So, Lord, when we don't know how to pray, teach us how we ought to pray, oh Lord. And then, oh Lord, we lift up all of the names. Shut in and those who are sick, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch 
we ask that you would remind them that you are God and besides me there is no other. For our bereaved families, Lord, continue to dispatch our angels to minister to their spirits and let them know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot hear. And then, Lord, for those who will be having procedures in the months to come, Lord, we ask that you would be with Brother Griffin. You know about his situation, Lord. We ask that you would meet him in the room, Lord. Matter of fact, we're asking that you would take him in the room, wrap your arms around him, hold him while he's in the room, and then bring him back out the room and minister to his spirit, oh Lord. Then, oh Lord, we ask that you would look down on these and your children. Lord, we don't know what this week is going to bring. But we know that if you bring us to the week, you can bring us through the week. So Lord, we bind every weapon and device and scheme of the devil that is planned for us this week, oh Lord. And we loosen joy, peace, and love for this upcoming week in our lives, oh Lord. For what this world needs is more love. And so, Lord, we just tell you thank you for showing us the greatest expression of love. Thank you, Lord. By laying your life down, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you for traveling grace and mercy. Right now, Jesus. As we depart from this place, but not your side. For, Lord, we ask that as we exit this place of worship and enter back into a world of service, that you would give us boldness and clarity of mind to stand and declare that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Thank you. Lord, somebody needs to hear those words. Thank you for your gift, Lord. Somebody needs to hear. Thank you for your gift. So, Lord, we just tell you thank you. Now, Lord, we ask that may the grace of our Lord and Savior, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Rest and rule and abide within each of us henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God sang. Tell somebody I love you, and it ain't nothing you can do about it.